Doing a quick mic check, mic check, one, two, three, mic check. Very good. All right, hey there, heroes! It's another Magic Monday! I am your friendly local neighborhood hero tuber, Hero Girl, and I'm here to let you know that if I can do it, you can too. Okay, so, running maybe just like a couple minutes behind schedule, but we're still fine. We are still fine. Everything sounds good. Yep, I think we're fine. We good. We Gucci for we Gucci. Whew. So funny thing about Arena is that sometimes it'll update. Which is usually good. Usually the updates are good, unless you're a streamer. So um sometimes when Magic Arena updates, it messes with the settings or files or whatever and resets them. And every time, I'm like, wait, why isn't Arena showing up in OBS? Why is OBS unable to track it? And um, I remember, oh, oh, right. It's, um, it's an update. <laughs> so then I have to call my wife and be like, wife, Arena updated and I don't know what happened. 
<laughs> Vijambi, thank you so much for the follow. Really appreciate that. And wait, did I put that right over my head? Huh, I guess I did. I should probably like move that real quickly. Thank you so much for stopping by. Just in time for us to get started with our magic stream. <sighs> and this one's going to be another altar ho hosting the stream. We held a, last week we held a poll on our Twitter about which altar who would be would be hosting this. And so everyone has just um evidently everyone has decided that they want Hero Knight to host it. So I'm just going to make some quick sound adjustments. <sighs> Are you ready to swap out? I hope you all v enjoy Hero Knight's presentation. Please treat her kindly. Phew. <sighs> hey there, heroes. I am Hero Knight. I am our friendly local neighborhood hero tuber. And we are here to let you know that if we can do it, you can too. Yes, we will be playing Diet Commander, as this is the only way to experience Commander through Arena, or at least something in close approximation to it. So, without further delay, we will go ahead and head over to our deck list, and we'll go ahead... Yes, I do believe that this is optimal. Very good. So, as was the case with last week, as Hero Witch was hosting, I have chosen two decks that I will be playing today. The first one will be Rakdos Dragons, yes. I adore dragons. Dr ever since we were small, we have always loved dragons, and I've deci decided that this is the best way for me to express that love. Now, we have Rives, since red and black is my preferred color pairing. My favorite color of magic is red which happens to be the perfect color for dragons. Moreover, black is a good, strong secondary color. We will have lots of removal and lots of card draw. We will have Phyrexian Arena. Murderous Rider is a nice include, since I do lo love knights as well. We also get the Splash Liliana for more re revival action. This deck, I did some tuning for it last week. And I believe it is at a point where it will be acceptable for streaming. Red Black also happens to play into Mardu, which as our favorite color trio, means that we have the most support for it. Now, for the second half of the stream later today, I was having a hard time deciding between either playing Sir Gwyn, which I did also do some tuning for, Knights are very good, and I do love the equipment. However, this deck is currently struggling. I lack a lot of the very powerful support that make knights very powerful. And unfortunately, we lack the wild cards in order to craft those. We had wild cards, however, I decided it was a better investment to put those into our dragons. So I may have to hold off on knights until the next time I host. We do, however... Have Darigaz. Darigaz may end up being the second deck of the stream because we do gain access to all the green. We do get access to Old Nawbone, who is very powerful and works very well with the commander that you want to recast over and over. Darigaz provides the long term inevitability that decks like Zeatora str can struggle with if you don't have enough card draw. In paper, I like to play Karthus. How about Mirum? Murum is a very good dragon. However, blue tends to not be my first choice for going into a three-color pair. I would much rather be playing Jund because I prefer to have the green... Let's see. Green Ramp. We also have Green Protection with Ranger's Guile and Snakeskin Veil. We also have Black Removal. Jund is my favorite three-color pair. So if it's a choice between Teamer and Jund, I will choose Jund. Every day. Although I am now curious as to whether we we should have a Miram. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. 
Let's see. There's actually a filter for this. We can look up commanders that happen to be dragons. And then, let's see. And I'll go ahead and make sure that we can see the uncollected too. Just so that way we can go ahead and double check. I keep forgetting that we have three Prismaris from all the Strixhaven drafting we did. So let's see. Do we have... We do! We do have a Miram. Fortunately, it looks like they're just a rare, so that wasn't a problem. And maybe at some point in the future, we will get around to playing a Miram deck. Miram is very popular for a reason. But again, I prefer having black removal over blue draw. Zerator was one I was also really, really enjoying, but unfortunately could never quite get it right. Unfortunately, our weakness is in deck building. And also, let me switch to a more ergonomic mouse. There we go. Much more comfortable. Some, at some point next week, you may end up seeing Rith being played. Next week? I would say either next week. No, likely the week after that. But you will be seeing Rith in the future for sure. So for now, we're going to go ahead and jump into the games. Because as far as Dragon Tribal goes, there don't tend to be any secret tech options or very specific synergies. If it says Dragon on it, you play it. No, and that certainly is a turn off to a lot of the more invested players. A lot of the more invested players will be disappointed at the lack of card availability. However, if you're a newer player, that can honestly be a boon. Because then you don't have as much you have to dig through. And there are still quite a few powerful cards to play. Such as Aluna. Alright then. This will be a hand that we pitch. There's just... This should be obvious, but there is a one lander. There's no artifact ramp. Especially with the Yugo equivalent having all of their cards. Not quite. They don't have the latest and, gra and greatest. Although, from what I understand, Tears is coming, reportedly, and, oh, this is much better. If you care about car the card pool, then yes, Arena does suffer from that. However, if your goal is accessibility to just being able to play the game, then I do think Arena is good for that to an extent. Uh, let's see, we'll wait off on the temple. We have one land... Let's go ahead and put that back. We already have the three here. We want to get Black Market Connection set up as quickly as possible. With an Aluna deck, that's going to be a combo. So then, next up, drop our Sulfur Springs and hold up our Instance. And we will pass the turn. And we should be in a good position to jam our market next turn. They haven't built anything board-wise, so if they want to get any sort of ramp going, they're going to need to do it this turn. So all shields should be down. Jombie, thank you so much for the subscription! That's very much appreciated! With subscription, you will now have access to the Hero Girl emotes, and we hope that you enjoy those. Now, they still have all their mana open. Black Market Connection is just part of what stabilizes us, and I don't really want to run into that. I didn't miss an opportunity to play Painful Bonds beforehand, but I don't know that that was a major pullback. Instead, we'll play the Barbarian. Rivez Dragon Ramp, yes! I'm so glad we have fellow Dragon Enthusiasts in chat today. There we go. Flip the switch. We saw that coming. Fortunately, Reckless Barbarian is one that we don't mind losing to the tempo. Especially since it sounds like they fear the ramp. Now the real issue becomes... Ah! So our opponent has retreated from Legacy to play Brawl. I'm still astounded that Expressive Iteration is what got banned from Del Legacy Delver, but here we are. 
I suppose it is effectively a sorcery speed divination, but still. All right, then. So we are clear. Let's go ahead and get our connections going. Ah, that's tempting. Carnelian Orb of Dragonkind is very, very tempting to go off, but the Black Market is just significantly more powerful. All right, then. I'm trying to be careful with the Painful Bond. The One Life doesn't matter too much, but we have a significant amount of cards that meet that threshold of three or less. So I would rather use this to refill. Furthermore, because we have the black market on our board, we might not need as much. Exactly. Respect Tybalt's trickery, because that's exactly what this deck wants to do. So we unfortunately just don't have the time. So we're going to go all in. Now, the real question... Will they allow this to resolve? I'm going to go ahead and play the orb now. Because if this does resolve, this makes any dragon that we top deck into much more dangerous. Never underestimate the power of haste. Okay, and they do allow it. We don't have anything we can do just yet. It's very t tempting to play Rivez right now, since that would use up our mana the most efficiently. However, I'm going to pass, because I want the removal available for when they inevitably try and mutate Eluna into something. And to that end, we have Edict and Bolt. We've got one creature out, so we have some amount of pressure. It's not perfect, but should be enough. At least in theory. And if it forces them to create a... Interesting. All right, then. Yep. So I think we know what their play is. Hmm, big score. That's interesting. I think I... Oh, gosh. Let's see that. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and let them get this. Because even though this does give them enough mana to potentially hold up a counterspell, we have both Edict and Lightning Bolt. So we'll be able to cast both if they try to protect Eluna. And once a Luna is on the board, excellent. That's exactly what we want. And now, if they, yep, there we go. Each opponent sacrifices a creature token. Now we have gotten them to use their pact negation as well as remove their ability to combo off. Next turn, we can also use a soul transfer to get rid of Aluna and set them back quite a bit more. <sighs> the only way that they can get out of this now is if they have a one mana counter spell to deal with the Edict or the Vault. Arya Azur, thank you so much for the raid. Beanbag raid, thank you so much. I know I may not sound like it, but this is incredibly exciting. You came in during the first stream that I am hosting. <laughs> thank you so much. Also, I do believe that we have confounded our opponent because they appear to be roping us. Either they are roping us, or they are deep in the tank. And at this point, because if we get to untap, we'll just get to play Orb of Dragonkind into either of our dragons. No, even better. We'll be able to soul transfer to get rid of their commander, play our commander, 
they'll have to tap out or lose. Oh, I just realized if we have a way to destroy their treasure, then we can still win. Or we can just win on the spot. All right, then. Go ahead. We'll draw cards. They will have to use... They need a mental misstep. I don't believe that's on Arena. And in a lot of her cases, I'm glad for it. Oh, that was such a large raid. Thank you again, Arya. You are very much treasured. Such a large raid, too. The new one from... That new one from All Will Be One. I'm afraid it's escaped my mind at the moment. I didn't recall a new Mental Mist of Variation coming out. Okay, then. So we'll go ahead. We'll pay the two life. As stated before... We'll go ahead... Exile... Oh! And we can return a creature. Get back our Reckless Barbarian, too. There we go. Ah, okay. Let me just go ahead and finish this game real quick. And we'll get that bot banned. Thank you for the heads up. One, two, three, four. Not quite enough mana. But we can go ahead... Yes, let's go ahead and thought seize them. Let's see, draw four, surveil, shuffle from the graveyard, search the library for an instant sorcery. All right, and there's the pact negation. Now I'll go ahead and ban the. Let's see. Do, do, do. Let's... There we go. Yep, there we go. Five's been banned. <sighs> Artifact removal, very powerful, even in chat. Now, typically with an Aluna deck, they will tibble trickery into an omniscience type play or into a gate or just something. And our opponent has very clearly just decided that they don't want to continue. Minor misstep. Let's see if I can find that real quick. We'll just pull up Scryfall. Ah, yes. One blue mana counter target spell with mana value one or less. That would do it. That would absolutely do it. Although it's not as powerful as Mental Misstep because it's not free. Hmm. I'm very pleased with how that with how the end result for that game was. However, it we didn't get a chance to really play with our dragons. Oh! Drevnod Karj Dominus. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of permanent control, that ability triggers an additional... Ah, so this is like Tesa. Okay. Oh, I see. And it's one of the domains. Also, if you want to do the get up command, that is just exclamation point get up. In fact, let me go ahead... I will wait until we take a break to the midtime point, and I'll see if I can go ahead and fix that bot for us. Fix that timer, specifically. And anytime that we lose or we die, we do have that get-up counter to encourage us to continue moving forward. We took the inspiration from Celeste, which may end up being the next long-form game that we end up playing. Oh, and real quickly before I forget, just to let all of our raiders and new viewers know, Magic the Gathering happens every Monday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Right now, we currently have a collaboration planned with a friend of ours on Wednesday for Master Duel, also 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern. And then this Friday, we should be wrapping up our end of the playthrough, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Wednesday, we will be announcing a change up to the schedule. This hand is not particularly good. It has plenty of lands, but it didn't have enough early action for us, especially against Elish Norn. This is much stronger. As long as we can draw into a second black source, we will be fine. We have a braid and we have a Thoughtseize to slow them down as well. Now granted, it won't be a turn one Thoughtseize, so we may miss something, but against a mono white deck, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. We'll also have our Red Dragon, Atsushi. We just need to be able to get the arena out on the board, which Elish Norn decks tend to play a lot of Oblivion Arena effects. So arena may or may not be sticking around. Oh, and I forgot to play the raid promo, darn. After this game, we can go ahead and run the raid promo in case any of our raiders are still around. <sighs> I have very much enjoyed watching our <laughs> magic streams. Magic has been a long time hobby for, for us well over a decade. And for a long time, we have dreamed of being able to stream magic. Even going back to our Commander Cast days. Now, our opponent is choosing whether or not they want to take their free mulligan. I would like to say that they have either disconnected or. Hmm. They may have disconnected. Arena is a quality product. Alright, there we go. Now we are back on course. Thriving Inspector, okay. So that's not a card that we would have wanted to take away. With Thoughtseize either way. Now, let's see. Touch the Spirit Realm, Exiles. The Eternal Wander can be a large problem. Exile target tap creature, arcane signet. I'm going to take the touch the spear around because we do not have a way to interact with this. The theory that lurkers not being counted as viewers unless they interact every two minutes. You will have to explain in what regard. I actually do go... Oh, oh a discord command. That's good. Believe it or not, we're still relatively new to streaming. We've only been doing this for a little over... Has it already been close to eight, nine months? I'll be sure to update some commands into the chat. And then, ah, we did draw our second source. Excellent. Longer than you. Everyone does have to start somewhere. Also, I am noticing that I like this better. Let me go ahead and move the chat over. Although, hmm, this isn't bad, actually. Because then it looks like I'm looking at the chat. I definitely think I enjoy having us over on the left side. If only because there isn't as much action to worry about. All right, now we have... Let's see. I was hoping for another land drop. We take out the Arcane Signet. The Elish Norn doesn't come down as quickly. I think that might be the play here. Ideally, if we had drawn another land, we could play our orb, play the land, and then play a braid, and that would be massive tempo in our favor. As it is right now... I believe this is the best that we have. We'll still be able to play the orb next turn. Hopefully we draw into... Oh, and they have Felidar Retreat. I see. Ah, still no land. 
But what we can do. Mindstone into Dragon Lord's Servant. It's not going to be as strong, but I think that still works. But the viewer theory is that someone knows their viewership count after stream is much different than during stream. So that person that knows is experimenting to see if Twitch has some sort of new algorithm. Interesting if true. Now, I do have a consultant that I work with who helps me analyze our data. And so we do still see all the viewers on Lurkers. And during the stream. Because I regularly... So, when we were going over our metrics, one of the things that she mentioned was how we seem to be averaging somewhere in the span of 7 to 10 viewers a stream. Which I'm very happy with. But given how many people I know are chatting, that means we also have a decent amount of lurkers. We love our lurkers. I'm always so happy that we can provide a good, comfortable atmosphere th for them. So it doesn't make sense to me that they wouldn't be counted with the data that we're seeing. Now, there's always new information that could come to light for that. And if that ends up being the case, then the game plan may have to change. But I severely doubt that Twitch's new algorithm would not count lurkers if they had to actively chat. In fact, I think that would honestly harm my stream. And I am convinced that our opponent has having connection issues right now. I am absolutely convinced. Because they just pass the turn. And unfortunately, this isn't necessarily how I want to win. Now, in that first game, their time running out was because they either decided that they were going to quit but didn't want to concede outright. Or if they were in a deep tank, it just ran out of time to think. But this one's just a connection issue. Exactly, yes. I just like the connection issues as well. Alright, so we do have our land drop. We're going to go ahead and play our orb. And what I would like to do... Exile target, tap creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Eternal Wanderer can exile an artifact or creature, but then it flickers it. I would rather not lose at Sushi, however... So then, let's go ahead and we'll play Draco Lich first. Draco Lich comes into play tapped already, so this will be good bait for them. And if they end up doing that instead of playing Elish Norn, then we have very strong tempo since Draco Lich will attack next turn along with either a Red Dra Wrathal Dragon or a Gold Span Dragon. We also have the option of putting down our Swashbuckler to turn the treasure's Gold Span creates into double striking opportunities. Also, if they're choosing to main phase the Draco Lich, which is interesting. Oh, and they're going to take care of the Servant, too. Interesting, but I don't think the Servant is what they wanted to use that on. So either they have additional removal. Well, let's see, four, five, six. I suppose... It would have been very strong tempo if they hadn't lost a turn. Which, given that they played both of those and they are reconnected, tells me that they were afraid that they would fall too far behind on tempo. Oh, and we have a glory breeder too. So then, what we want to do, now that we have five, six, seven... Let's see, we can still play Goldspan Dragon for 5, and we'll have 4 mana left over. 4 mana left over means that we could potentially play Atsushi or Rivaz. Rivaz is very tempting right now, so... Sure, let's do that. Let's go ahead and use the Mindstone first. 
I guess Auto Tapper does not like it when we do anything else with it. We'll attack with the Gold Span, make some treasure. We'll use this. And we'll go ahead and cast our Riv Claw. This way, we're presenting multiple threats, and they're going to be hard pressed to deal with both of them at once. Rivez will help turbo out additional dragons. Goldspan Dragon will continue to ramp us out as well. So they will, they will opt to take out Rivaz, and this is why we don't want to play Rivaz as often as what I would like to. Okay then. Now we don't have to worry about using that treasure for the inspection. Let's see then. So. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight mana. How do we want to do this? Let's see, yeah, sushi is very good to play. I feel like what I'm going to do here. Hmm. Yes, let's go ahead and we'll play the red, the red dragon. Vivid, thank you so much. Opinion on Commander Masters coming out this year. So, with regards to Commander Masters, I honestly try to avoid spoilers these days because WotC puts out so many of them. WotC has inundated the market so hard thanks to the new executive having a Microsoft mini transaction mindset that I honestly we can't keep up with it we can't keep up with all the releases plus it's not like we've played paper commander in quite a while when we get to a point where we do want to deck build again we will actively look scour the new stuff that has come out and see if anything stands out to us but as someone who loved magic dearly grew it's very disappointing. It's disappointing and just too much information. It's too overwhelming. Now, if you were to make magic your whole career, if, for example, you wanted to be a limited resources, or if you were to integrate it as thoroughly as you do for a loading ready run, then it's great because you always have something to talk about. However, for a variety streamer like us, even though we do primarily work with card games it's just too much okay then so they're at 11 let's see we have a dragon whelp right here please five very good very good so what we're going to do is we're going to play Dragon Whelp. We're not going to kick it. And we're also going to play Glory Breener. And then that should be lethal. There we go. <laughs> yes, we are winning, Vermilion. Thank you so much. Played Spell Table. Oh, you're going to have to remind me. Was Spell Table the mo mobile app? I feel... No, that was Spell Slingers, wasn't it? But no. D typically, honestly, if we wanted to play a virtual tabletop to try and experience magic, all of our friends use Cockatrice, and Cockatrice tends to be much more accessible since it can be modded to account for eye strain, for text size, all of that stuff. And it's not that I don't mind... We have played Cockatrice before, and it works when we want to play with the people we care about. However, I th and I think you may agree with this to some extent, it's not the same. It's unfortunately just not the same. Now, we have played with our partners and loves, where we can have a family night, sit down, and just play some commander with each other. And I very much miss that. 
ever since the pandemic started, we just have not had the chance to experience that. Cockatrice is a very good program. I appreciate how flexible it is. Now, the downside to that flexibility is that you have to micromanage so much on your own, which can lead to exha so much exhaustion. Ah, we're up against Cat Pasta playing Rowan, Scholar, Sparks. And we have a fairly decent hand here. We can use our Young Red Dragon to ramp. And... Let's see, this tends to be a sort of storm build, if I remember correctly. They rely on Rowan and Will to reduce the cost of all their spells so they can start copying things. We'll lead off with our dual land. And then we'll go into Swamp, into Red Dragon. Ah, uh, and there's Pyromancer right on time. Let's see, Ridge... We want to get the arena down as quickly as possible because we're just not going to be able to catch up. A web browser that's going to play paper magic with a webcam. Now that's interesting. Let's see, one damage to each opponent. Okay, so now I have a decision to make. My inclination is to get rid of Rowan as quickly as possible. That may end up having to be what we do, yes. Now, do we use Bedevil or Brittle Blast? I'm inclined to say Bedevil, because even though this is more flexible, it's also much more intensive. So if we get rid of Rowan now, then we'll be able to, to make much more flexible plays later We're using the Brittle Blast. You can send a video talking about it. Yes, that would be delightful. If you want, you can always go ahead and hit us up on Twitter, which is at Hero Girl Games. Or if you scroll through chat, I believe the timer bot did post one for Discord. Okay, now. We're going to fall behind so quickly if we drop Arena now. So then what would be the play here? Yes. We'll drop Dragon Speaker. And that'll let us drop Predator as well. I would say that's our best tempo play. Found me through Twitter. Then I'm glad that the hashtags were working. Alright, so now we have Shaman and Predator. Let's see then. They shock the Shaman. I can eat it with the Predator, but then the Predator taps and it doesn't block. So I am going to risk my Predator being indestructible. And they're likely going to try to shock it. If they do that, then... That's more cards out of their hand, and that's less removal for Rivaz. Yep, there we go. Alright then, so here's our mountain. And we're still not quite at the ability at the ability to play multiple cards a turn. As much as I might not want to, hmm. They can still play Rowan. And I feel like I want to say the Brittle Blast for that. We have to get the arena down. We're just going to have to take a turn off. Because the longer that we hold off on arena, the worse it becomes to play. In this way, we can still top deck into a Wrath to help clear the board. Oh, yep. And there it is. So then... Let's see. Let's go ahead. We'll make another red source here. And then... That red pyromancer put in way too much work. Okay, so there's the brainstorm. And they had their thousand year storm out on board too. We are in a very precocious situation. 
we have to hope that they feel they're safe enough to play Rowan this turn, I feel. Ah, okay. Yep, our opponent is storming off. We were too slow for them. Too slow to deal with them. Now, we'll have to hold up a Brittle Blast for sure, meaning that we're effectively stuck on three lands right now. We can go ahead and play Rivaz. I expect Rivaz to get burned out. We've also got Coligan's Command, which doesn't help as much. Alright, so they're going to crash through to draw all their cards. Thousand Year Storm is very much a hero fairy type card. I would not be surprised at all, at all that it, once we have a chance to let hero fairy host a stream, that she'll be showing off a lot of decks like this one. Yep, and there's Solve the Equation, which unfortunately means Time Warp, Mind's Desire. Yep, I do believe we've lost this one. I'm still going to see what we draw, but we're not playing Thought Desecration or anything like that. I am going to scoop now because they did get the copy to play with Fires. So, unfortunately, unfortunately it gets a Storm deck, unless you have hand disruption or you're just aggressive enough, you're not going to be able to beat them. A combo deck will win as, for as long as it has life. And the only real thought hand disruption we're running is Thoughtseize. Now, we could pull out an Ugin... We could consider... Oh, uh, we could pull out Junji Ito if we wanted. But I'm honestly... Not a fan of trying to reach too far out of what our colors can do. And I would prefer to lean into what they're strongest with. We have Ugin here specifically to help deal with that as colorless removal. So for example, if we had a turn where, where we had Ugin in our hand and he could have destroyed the Thousand Year Storm before it go went off, then we, we still might have had a chance. But, unfortunately, we didn't see him. Plus, he is also the progenitor of dragons on Tarkir. And Tarkir is, without question, my favorite plane in Magic. And I'm sure you can guess why. So let's go ahead and just keep playing. Even with the games playing out as they have been, I am still satisfied with how the deck has been forming, and it makes me glad that I took the time to start tuning it up last Thursday. As we get more comfortable in our magic streams, we will be able to, to settle into a rhythm where we rotate between altars, so that way everyone has a chance to show off. Now this will be interesting, we have not yet played against Perfected Mind. Mill is just another form of burn, though. Now, as for this hand, the Undred Red Dragon can help us get to three. They'll be casting Jace on three, but unfortunately, Jace gets out of Brittle Blast range. Well, no, not if they do not if they complete him. That being said, I still don't trust this hand. There is an unexpected windfall. But that relies on the Red Dragon token still far too much. Glory to Phyrexia or need to be completed? Need to be completed, as in the actual mechanic. As in, if they play, play him completed, then he'll come down earlier, but he will have two less loyalty counters. Now this is... somewhat worse. We don't have any red sources... Mm. This is still bad, but it's not the worst. Because we have the sign in blood to help draw into additional lands. Yep, and they're going to go ahead and lean right into the mill strategy. Which you would think 
would play very well with how we want to run Riv as. However, our deck is not fast. In fact, what I may need to do is I may need to tune it to have stronger ramp options, so that way it can keep up. Yeah, I do think I might need to tune the deck just a little bit more to be a little faster. Because now, unfortunately... Unfortunately, we are very behind on tempo. And they were allowed to just untap. We will go ahead and run with a thrill possibility, though. And what I'll do, we're heavy black and heavy red, but I'll discard the mountain, and they won't counter this. Alright, now then, how would we like to do this? We want to maintain tempo wherever we can. So we'll play the Mind Stone, which again, they will not counter. And we're not going to play into, into counter magic. I think they missed a land drop, though. Okay, so then it's our turn. We're going to get to a point where we can cast two spells a turn. And that's when we take over. So we'll play our Plaza of Heroes since that comes into play untapped. Now, hmm. Let's go ahead. We'll tap our Mind Stone first because, again, Auto Tapper does not want us to use Mind Stone. Are we with Phyrexia or the Resistance? Perf we are with the Resistance. Counter target spell, speak a sp I see. So they do so they did have the counter spell. So now they will search a card. That will let us play Rivas. And now we'll be able to cast all of our dragons. They had to deal with Rivas, but that's going to require them to tap out. Alright then. So first things first. Well, Temple of Malice. I like Opportunity Dragon on top. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What can we do with 8? Let's see. We can... Hmm... Let's go ahead, we'll use Rivaz and the Mindstone Claw. I want to cast the Thunderbreak Regent. So let's go ahead. We'll cast the Predator. And they can counter this. Yep, counter target creature spell. But it was a card that was going to be exiled either way. Now, they could have a second spell here, but with Revaz on the board... Yep, there we go. Thank you for stopping by, Glitter Blossom. And I'm so happy that Lean enjoys this deck. Alright, so now we have a Black Market connection as well. Oh, they're doing, they have a stop on our upkeep. Why do they have a stop on our upkeep? What did they stop on our upkeep for? And thank you again for the compliment. Now, I was looking for suit add-ons that we could add on to our model. Unfortunately, what I may need to do is I may need to commission that one specifically. It's not that I'd mind the outfit. But I would prefer to present myself in a much more suitable fashion. 
again though, what did our opponent set the upkeep stop to? Okay, now we're on our main phase. Very good. Now, just like before, what we will do... We have... Let's go ahead and cast our Opportunistic Dragon. As that... Would be the biggest blow to them to lose their Signet. Now, will they either, if they counter it... Then we can go ahead and run our black market connections. Ah, there we go. So we'll go ahead and we'll take that signet. And now it's our signet. Furthermore, let's see. They didn't take, they didn't counter it. So I'm going to take the chance that either they don't have counters. Or what they're doing is they're holding removal. Ah, no, they knew that it was a bait. They knew it was bait. Interesting. That was very well played on our opponent. They did not take the bait, and that was very well played. Now, I suppose what I could have done is I could have played our Wrathful Red Dragon instead. And our opponent has conceded. Our opponent was on Perfected Mind Jace. And it doesn't look like they could really get through what they wanted to do with their milling. Love it when they bought streamers acknowledge their opponent's skills. I'm glad. One of the things that we took away most when we started playing fighting games like Guilty Gear Strive was learning to compliment our opponent. Because when you compliment your opponent, you're observing them, you are paying attention to them, and you are acknowledging that. This is a two-player game. They have their game plan, and we have our game plan. And the game isn't just about what we want to do. The game is about interacting with your opponent, or in the case of certain Storm decks, not interacting. <laughs> but you still have to acknowledge what they want to do and figure out how you stop that. That is the name of the game. <sighs> and for our part... Rivaz does help us circumvent the control because they weren't able to establish a dominant enough presence. So because we can just counter, we can just run a dragon out every turn for free. And because the creature never died, it goes back to the graveyard, meaning that we can go ahead and cast it again. Rivaz was effectively drawing us a card and helping us circumvent them on card advantage and tempo. Let's see then. So, this will be the last game we play with Rivas for the hour. It'll be against five color slivers. After this, we'll take a look at the other decks, and I'll figure out which one will be making its debut. We'll play that one for an hour. And then for the final hour, we'll go ahead and hold our vote to let our viewers decide which deck they would like to see for the final hour. Now, this is a... Very strong keep. We have Thought Seize, Strike It Rich, Orb, and Dragon. Right now, I like Opportunistic Dragon in this metagame, specifically because it steals artifacts. And we're seeing a lot of multicolor artifact dependent decks. Now, let's see. Draw a card for each type. Choose, maybe cast it to a copy of that spell. Slivers. Artifacts. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the enchantment because that's the card that we are able to interact with the least. Ugin is the only enchantment answer that we have. I'm glad you're excited to buy it. Anytime I can make my viewers excited, it definitely means that we're doing something right. Moreover, I feel like it's very good for streamer health to go ahead and... Work in some regular breaks. Now I want to hold on to the Bajuka Bog as a spell because we have plenty of other lands. There's their Arcane Signet. They don't appear to have any sort of answers off the top of their head. So we could go ahead and drop an orb. And I'm very tempted to play Rivaz right now. However, 
like I said earlier, this is a metagame where everyone is very dependent on their artifacts, and if we can take those away, that's going to stop them cold. So go on, little dragon. You can go ahead and have a trinket. This is a very good dragon. And dragons can have little trinkets as a treat. So they'll go ahead and they'll play their faceless agent, which does search for a sliver. But now we know everything in their hands sans the creature that they found. Now, let's see. We don't get to tap this for mana ourselves because that would be a little too silly. How do we want to do then? We can play this and get our dragon kind. We'll have two mana available. We could strike your fridge, but I don't think that does anything for us either. Let's go ahead. We'll play Revaz and swing. Because now next turn we'll have four, five, six, seven. Spend three of this to get the orb out. And that'll let us play Terror of the Peaks with, with haste. Let's see. Choose a creature. Comes to play with a counter on it. If they draw the right land, they still cast their first sliver. Not a whole lot we can do about that, though. So we'll go ahead. Drop our Terror of the Peaks, which now has haste. There we go. Haste is my favorite keyword because it is the best tool that aggro decks have against control. Now they do get to cascade their sliver. Slivers you control have menace. Okay, so now... We don't have any other dragons that we can play. Let's see, we have Menace. This will be nine. Oh, wait. There we go. That's what that should be the win. We'll just go ahead and we'll get rid of this belligerent sliver. And then There we go. Exaxes. Exactly. See, you're a control player, you know. I'm glad that I've... Destiny Hero Dysphoria! Thank you so much for the follow. Really appreciate it. And also a fantastic name, which goes very well as we close out this match into our schedule. Gowan Drum! Thank you for the follow. We're getting so close to our 200 follower goal. And then this month, we will be making plans to go ahead and do our Yu-Gi-Oh! Our... Legend of Zelda Smash or Pass stream. When we hit 200, which is the new goal, we'll be doing live fic reading on stream. We'll also be reading viewer and subscriber submitted entries. Now, very quickly, before we go ahead and take our short break, just in case anyone decides that they want to use this opportunity to peace out, we do magic every Monday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This Wednesday, we will be collaborating with a friend to play some Master Duel. On Wednesday, also 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Friday, we will be having our final Ender Lily stream from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Though that may end up running long, depending on how quickly that takes us to finish. So we'll go ahead and head back to the deck profiles. And we'll figure out what it is that we'll be playing. Whether that's Derry Gas, Sir Gwyn, or perhaps Squee. Those are the three decks that I'm leaning towards right now. We'll figure that out when we come back following these messages. Please do not leave the channel. We'll be right back. There. I think what we do is we go ahead, we play that out. And we continue just building our board. And... Yeah, we're going to go ahead, play this out too. X creatures and oh my god oh dear mother of pearl what the hell seek x creatures and chamets were x oh my oh what the 
I don't have an emote appropriate for this moment. What the actual googly moogly? Holy... You know what? You know what? I don't have a way to come back from that. GG's. Wow. Wow. I'm not even mad. Just like... What the hell? Welcome to die. This joke again? The localization team will think we got it wrong. Stop! Barry! How dare you, human? Those were your very last words. You fool! No, you are the fool. We will never give up. As long as we can still breathe. We will fight for Earth. And for everything that is right. Friendship unites us. Hero girls. Hero shine. Transmitting at the speed of light. Hero girl scout. Hero witch. Wisdom to do what's right! Hero Girls Techie! Hero Fairy! Unbreakable Will. Hero Girls Assault. Hero Knight. The power to believe! Hero goes leader! Hero girl! Together we are! Hero girls! Alright, and we should be returned now. I'll go ahead and make sure... Let me adjust the volume. How is the music chat? Is the music plentiful? Magic Arena does have a very nice ambiance to it, even if the music doesn't I believe the term is slaps as hard as Master Jewel's music. The Softies, thank you so much for stopping by. We always appreciate people stopping by and joining our chat. And also, before I forget, I didn't notice this at the time, but Gal and Drum, thank you so much for the follow be specifically because I enjoy that username. That is a very good username. Buddy Fight was a very was and is a very important part of our history with card games. Music is very faint. Okay, let me go ahead and... We'll turn this up. And I will also make adjustments on the slider. And if not, well then... I don't think there's any true loss with... Magic's ambiance. It's certainly better than the copyrighted music that we were running before, which, even though I enjoy that music quite a bit, does make it harder to post the VODs, so... I suppose... No music is better than... Music that gets your channel taken down. <sighs> so... As said before, we will be choosing our next deck. And... Let's see. Let's go ahead and stream out the Brawl decks very quickly. Now, Derrigaz is a deck I was messing around with last night. Messing around with doesn't seem like the right term. I was trying it out last night. I was testing it, making some changes to see if it's a deck that I would enjoy playing. Particularly since I already have a Zia Tora deck. I do think Derrigaz plays much better than Zia Tora for what I like. I very much enjoy mid-range type decks. Decks that aren't bl blistering fast, but are very good at survival and longevity. Now, if we wanted a blistering fast deck, we
we do have this Squee Goblin deck. This deck that we pulled together from whatever rabble we could pull off the streets. We've got Weaselback, Redcap, Street Cadet, Sneaking Guide. Just a bunch of mindless little friends. And it's interesting because this wasn't my first choice for deck. When we Hero Girls were dividing the decks amongst us, we realized that we needed someone who would play Mono Red for us. And by process of elimination, this fell to me. And at first I wasn't sure what to make of this, but I've very much come to enjoy our little... Friends is a good word for it, but what word would you use for a friend that you're on good terms with? But they admittedly have very odd and strange tendencies. <laughs> and I say that with much love. Because these little guys have been surprisingly adept at helping us clear dailies. Best friends? Maybe. Maybe my best friend will be a goblin. So it's either goblins, Darigaz, or Sir Gwyn. Sir Gwyn would have been my ideal. Arya! I was not aware that you were still around, and it means a lot that you stuck around for what you did. I wish you pleasant dreams, a wonderful night, no disturbances, and I hope you wake up very well rested tomorrow. Sounds just like your fr friends. <laughs> now, not, I would have enjoyed playing knights today. However, Sir Gwen has been very difficult. To get right because she requires equipment and creatures to equip them too. We play a bunch of the equipment creatures. Goblins are great. We don't have any friends that fit the description. Friends are still friends. Friends are absolutely still friends. Let's see. I was considering build building the new one. Zadok. The one that drafts. However, the lack of wild cards has prevented us from doing so. So I believe what I will be doing... You know what? Let's play goblins. Let's have fun with our funny little green men, women, and... What would be a non-binary term for non-binary goblins? Lack of wild cards, most relatable streamer content. <laughs> Alright, now I'm definitely convinced. So, first thing I'm going to do... Since this is a deck that I played... No, I didn't ha have a chance to play this, but I did have a chance to just look at it and see if there are any new goblins. We could, like, play the Fusling. We could also play Scamp. But honestly, I don't feel like there was any specifically relevant new goblins that we have obtained. So, we're just going to run this as is. Gob binary. I like that. Our green little... Let's see. Funny little green men, women, and god binaries. I like that. Alright, so we'll push Derigaz off to another day. Since I feel like Derigaz is very similar to Rivgaz in that it just ramps and play green dragons. And we'll go for variety instead. Now, where did my... There they go. And we'll see exactly how far we can get on a shoestring goblin budget. Because typically when you see goblins on arena, you're gonna see stuff like Muxus, a lot of the pile of synergy type cards. Oh, and we're gonna be playing against four Inklax, I see. So we do have a charger and fodder. We've got Flare to take care of their L's. Bolt and Renny, ah, that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to add in the other five damage card that just came out. And honestly, with a deck like this, it's very easy and relaxing to just turn things off. So, like I said, we've got Kami Flare. We want to hold off on Bolt or Rending Flames. So remember to Bolt your else. And hopefully, we'll draw into another land so we can play our Squee. The music is more audible now. I'm glad. So then, what I'll need to remember is to pretty much put everything up to max. 
Oh, and perfect. We can go ahead and drop Squee. All right, and we are set now. Rebel Salvo. Yes, exactly, Glitter Blossom. That is exactly the card. And it works very well in Commander, too, since typically in Historic Brawl, if you're playing a deck that really cares about its commander like Ruvaz, you'll be playing Swift Foot Boots, so it may often end up being a two-mana instant. And you would still happily play it at three. Now, let's see. This is a 3-3. Three, three. Let's see. I feel like that may be what we want. The Automaton. Oh, get plus one, plus one. Yes. I do believe that for the sake... Oh, and they do get Hexproof. That's right. I forgot that that was a thing that they could respond to it with. Hmm. So that's a miscalculation on my part. But on the plus side, we have two cards in Graveyard now. Let's see if they'll trade it for our Goblin. Ah, no! They'll just take the one. Well, that worked out in our favor then. Because now it's smaller. And we get to keep our Squee out. Let's see. Other creatures. So this one is just the Anthem. We'll play our Dragon Fodder. Ah, oh, I see. But they had a Blizzard Brawl to deal with Squee. In that case... Let's go ahead and decline. We'll decline that specifically. Let's see, now we're at four, and Squee requires us to exile, let's see, four other cards. Yep. They have a Gaia Cradle incoming, but they have to have creatures on board for that. And this turn, they're just going to take a lot of damage. We need one more card in there. Let's see, yep, we'll just drop the Automaton. And Goblin. And we'll just play more goblins. <sighs> and then next turn we'll cycle away our shredded sails. Okay. Oh, that's the Fertilid, right. The mustachioed bug man itself. Let's see, we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think this is a win if we manage to get this off. Let's go ahead. We'll see if they have a snakeskin veil. And that'll force them to tap out. I think we can still win if we just swing out. And even if they do... Ah, I see. And then that's our win. Fertilid has a message? Yes! So, in the first printing of Fertilid, in the way that the art was drawn, it made it look like its little ant head had a mustache. And honestly, this is all this deck ever does. It plays a bunch of very small creatures, it removes the creatures that they can't get attacked past, and they just kill people. And it's very easy for me to play this deck and just clear out a bunch of rewards. Which, honestly, we should probably do more often, especially since we want to save up for drafting. A Menace in Standard Mono Red. That makes me happy. For every who's fallen by my side. Oh, and we got Koth Fire Resistance. <laughs> One may say that is thematically appropriate for today. Let's see. A four. I don't think I've actually read this card. Four mana with four loyalty. Plus two, search your library for a basic mountain, reveal it, put into your hand, then shuffle. Neg three, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. Appropriate for Koth, he's always been built around mountains. And then negative seven, you get an emblem with whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control. This emblem deals four damage to any target. This is a good card. I, I like this card. I remember when Koth was out in Scars of Mirrodin standard, actually. We had a one-off that a friend gave us at the time, simply because, even though he was a $50 card at the time. 
Oh, before we queue up, let's go ahead and make some quick adjustments. Where did Squee go? Squee, little rascal. There you are. Alright, so we got Koth, and I'm tempted to put Koth into this deck. But we want to try and keep an aggressive turnout. And I can always... You know what I might do at some point? I may try making a new deck with Koth as the commander. That would be enjoyable. We could actually focus that entirely on land destruction. I may do that. Yes. Yes. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab Salvo real quick. There we go. There's Rebel Salvo. And then actually, you know what else I want? Brother's End. Brother's End is a very good replacement for Anger of the Gods. And while it won't exile the creatures, this is also very good against those five color decks that are way too reliant on their artifact ramp. So, let's see. I feel like we potentially cut out the banner. Let's see. I don't want to cut out any of our smaller goblins. Siege Gang Commander is a very good top end. I don't think we cut any of these four cost goblins. Even twin, although twin shot sniper might be a cut. Let's see, just double checking here. We have Hazard's Monument to help us dig. Adaptive Automaton. The Canonized Warfare. Deal damage to deals my damage to plus plus one. <clears throat> if a red or artifact source you control would deal damage to an opponent or permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one. So yes, we do keep that. There's Outburst and Warchief. There's the Brothers End. So the three cards that I feel like red decks want to run if they don't have access to black, then they want to be running Rending Flame, Rebel Salvo, and Brittle Blast. All three of these three cost instants deal five damage to target creature or planeswalker, which is already above curve for what you would be paying for. And they're very important for dealing with a lot of the problem planeswalkers in the format. Although some of the new Completed Planeswalkers, primarily Nessa, do get around this, depending on how they play them. Most people playing Nessa against a red deck are not going to be playing her early, specifically so they can play around Brittle Blast. They will play Nessa, they will activate her immediately to put her out of range. Now you still want a Brittle Blast in response, since that puts her down to 1 and then she's only making 1-1 one, one horrors. Is New Shieldra as scary in this format as she is in all the other ones? To some extent, I think she is. Now, she is a very, very strong card. However, if people are playing her as their commander, then in a way, that's not really any different than any other scary deck that has a scary commander. When you're playing Historic Brawl, you're going to focus on cards that will help you deal with your opponent's commander, since obviously most people will build around set commander. So, it really depends. It really depends. If Shieldred is allowed to stay around, though, she can deal a lot of damage, and she's a very strong stabilizing force. However, I don't know that I would call her scary. That may be a that may specifically be a tribute to the format, though. Oh, Demon Bolt is very nice to have too. I just need to cut two cards. I think I will experiment with cutting Banner and Sniper, though. Just to get just a little bit more removal in here. You have to do what you can on a budget. And for your money, those three cards are going to be very good. Because you can use uncommons to get them. And they will go the mile. Three mana, instant speed. Five damage. And we're up against another storm deck in Joy Weather Weatherlight Captain. This is exactly the kind of hand that we want. We'll have a first turn Foundry Street Denizen. We can take our second turn off to play the Forgotten Cave. And then turn three, we can play either our Automaton, a Monument, or a Banner. Now at this point, we just have to be faster. It just all depends on how fast we are. So they're going to drop a, a Maze's Mind. Maze Mind Tome? There we go. 
And there's the link to the community discord if anyone wants to join us. I believe right now we're actually in the middle of planning our birthday collab stream. We're not entirely sure exactly what we'll be doing, although we do have some ideas. One of the things I know Hero Girl is interested in doing is hosting a Pokemon Unite team. Oh yes, Arena has a Denitha avatar. This one came out with the original Return to Dominaria, if I remember correctly. Since this one is modeled off of the first Denitha card, that reduces the cost of auras and equipment. I chose this one very specifically because, one, I admire her haircut, and I enjoy that for myself. And also, I identify very strongly with the night aesthetic. Now, they have everything tapped out. Everything untapped. So they're holding up some sort of counter magic. The real question is, what sort of tempo play are we willing to take for this? I feel as though... Hmm. If they don't counter the banner, we win. If they counter the banner, we don't lose that much. So let's go ahead and do that. Not touch Arena in a while. Well, if you're always interested in get, getting into Arena, you can always play it small. That is my recommendation. Play it small. Don't feel like you have to rush. And find a way, find a focus. Find a, an aspect of the game that you can focus on that will bring you joy. So for us, fortunately, that is Historic Brawl. And we had a deck that we could focus on to just make that one better. And then slowly branch that out into everything else. Alright, they're going to play their Archive. So now what that means for us is we can go ahead, drop our Monument. Let's see. And then we can go ahead and cast Squee. That'll trigger the monument as well, so we can start filtering through some of these deader land cards. Let's go ahead. We'll drop a mountain. And we get a Hobgoblin Captain. Very good. And then Squee is going to make the Street Denizen even larger. So our opponent took the turn to tap out. And now we get to punish it for it with a 4 1. They're at 7 life. So they will need to Wrath if they want to live. Let's see... Pay 2, put a page counter, draw a card. Oh, it needs 4 or more page counters. For some reason I thought it was 3. <laughs> now your mileage will vary depending on what deck you want to use to focus on. Specifically... Ah, they're going to Bolt Squee. I see. Uh, we have two cards. We're going to send Squee back to the Command Zone. Because we don't have enough Graveyard to pay for his disappearance. Now, the real question becomes, how do we want to do this? We can drop an Automaton. They'll make these three, put them, puts them down to one. But if we play Squee, they block Squee. And they take 8. I think that wins us the game. So we'll go ahead and we'll discard the land again. And if we draw into another land, we could potentially play that. Oh, but we have Fire Prophecy. Oh, and they're willing to Pact of Negation Squee. That's interesting. Let's see then. So they're willing to do that. You know what? I'll allow it. We still have three cards in our graveyard. No, let's leave Squee. Hmm. He's currently got attacks of four. We'll leave him in the graveyard for now. And then we will go ahead and cast the Goblin. Let's go ahead and discard... Let's see, Jorvik goes off. We can't do anything about that. I feel like... We could Prophecy and Warfare next turn if we need to. 
I like the automaton as an anthem. It's a tricky situation. And then we are just going to swing with everything. Because that makes the next turn's attack so much harder to deal with. When you're playing a deck like this, you cannot show fear. You cannot be afraid to send your friends into the battle and say, some of you will die. But it's a sacrifice we have to make. Because now, let's see. They're at seven life. What did they do to... Oh, right, of course. The Tome. Exiles and gets them for life. I see. All right, then. Now, let's see, then. <laughs> Spoken like a knight. I don't know if that is... Braze or Triding. So, let's see. We do have six mana, though. So... Let's go ahead and... Ah, and they're gonna... And they will surrender. Okay. So, Squeak will cost three because we have the reduction on that. Teasing praise. In that case, it's very much appreciated. So the play there, I believe, is to play Squee. And then wait, Warfare and Automaton more or less do the same thing. I think we play the Automaton as well. So that way these creatures do not die from Psy. Either way, that was going to be game. So our opponent did correctly scoop. I did have some concerns with playing Squee on stream because it is not a polished deck. However, I do feel that this is good for accessibility. As Zoptis was saying earlier, if you haven't played in Arena in a while, it can be very daunting to go into a queue like Historic Brawl where there is a lot of power. And we definitely had a time in our lives where we dealt with a lot of frustration because it felt like no matter what we were doing, it just wasn't powerful enough to keep up. Who needs a polished deck when your opponent can get can have zero life instead? <laughs> that is definitely Yes, there is definitely truth to those words. Especially when you have something like goblins who are just so good. So good at just being reckless and pushing through. And there are gonna be a lot of times where we play against decks that can survive the onslaught and stabilize, and then we lose. And I'm okay with that. If you're willing to accept that, they are a great deck to have. And we'll lead off with our Prospector as a good turn one play. Now every goblin that we play... ...can help fuel the cause. Oh, authority of the consoles. That is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. We'll go ahead, we'll drop our Trailblazer. And they gain a life. It's like that card was specifically made to make sure I do not have fun. <sighs> but what can you do? Alright then, so... We've got a mountain. If we play the Herald Banner, that gives us more power. But I feel like the tempo from playing Squee is significantly stronger. Because now next turn, Squee will be available to swing it and drop additional friends. Plus, we do still have all these cards available. Prospector can turn any of Squee's tokens into mana. So what I'm thinking is we'll drop the banner, swing in, we'll be able to use the banner plus the prospector to play Thrill of Possibility to turn whatever card we draw into. Okay, they're going to play Glittering Frost. Interesting. So they're playing Enchantment Base Ramp. Which does get around the artifacts. Oh, and Lightning Strike is here. I do love Lightning Strike. Well, you know what they say. Coming into play doesn't matter if you're already attacking. So they do gain the life now. 
But now, they are just going to start losing it faster than they can get it back. And we have answers for days. They'll go ahead and cast his first sliver. That's to be expected. And we can't do anything about that. They will cast Mastermind Acquaintance. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. I see. Let's see. Now, is it worth it for us to two for one ourselves? If it means taking out the sliver, it may be. It may be. So they do get to cast their sliver. Hmm. I'm not going to use throw a possibility just yet. There we go. Right now we have three, four, five. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and... This will let them cast their first sliver again. But only so far as they're able to actually play her. Because at this point, they're going to take way too much damage. We negate the life gain by just dealing extra damage. And now they're- Oh! That's a misplay on my part. That is a misplay on my part. I forgot that the lightning strike deals target to damage to players too. So if we had used the abrade instead of the lightning strike the next turn, we could have just won by bolting them directly to the face. They do have an opportunity to wrath now. So they'll key to the archive instead. I don't know that they imagined that we had enough removal for their sliver. But th if we lose, that would that would be the play that cost us, unfortunately. Because, oh, yes. No, it would have been game right there, because then we could have sacrificed the goblins to the prospector and just played it from hand. <sighs> well, as Hero Fairy would say, the L is for learning. Oh! And our opponent's going to give us the game anyway. So, it did not come back to bite us. We'll just have to remember that line of play for next time. Alright, and we still have a nice comfortable 20 minutes left to spend with our goblin friends. Wise on Fairy's part, indeed. She picked it up from, yet again, more fighting game videos. I sincerely believe that researching and learning how to play fighting games has helped us improve as a player immensely. Not necessarily skill-wise, but most assuredly in our mindsets. See, we'll be playing against Gishath, Sun's Avatar. When it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library. You can put the dinosaurs on there for free and put the rest back in a random order. This is a good hand to keep. Very similar to what we had before. We've got our War Chief. We have a Blessed Bolt. And a Prospector to lead us off with. The thing about fighting games that I enjoy is that while you are playing to win, you don't play them to win, if that makes sense. The goal is to win, but you're doing this specifically because you enjoy the fight. You enjoy the struggle of the game. All right, we're gonna go ahead and drop Castle Embereth. We don't have a way to deal with the artifact, unfortunately. We can hold out the Blessed Bolts, perhaps, but that would be about it. We could potentially sacrifice the Prospector to get a War Chief out ahead of time. That might not be the worst thing, actually. Hmm. How cheeky would that be? And do I have the patience for that? Hmm, I guess a dinosaur deck like this... You know what? I'm gonna do that. That's not a line of play that I've had, I've tried before. So we're going to do that. And what that'll let us do is it'll let us use our Ruin Blaster to get rid of their Sun Petal Grove and slow them down. Especially since they seem to have double mountains. 
Ah, Domri Raid. Alright, so they will have two mana. Explains a lot, actually. To play a Raptor. Creature spells you cast cause one less. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Marauding Raptor deals two damage to it. If a dinosaur is dealt damage this way, he gets 2-0. Interesting. Interesting. So now this is a dubious... This is a dubious situation to be in. Let's see. Obliterating Bolt gets rid of Domri. We can still play the Crater Maker, but right now we're kind of walled by that Raptor. Damage to target creature equals the number of goblins that you control. Hmm. Let's go ahead and get rid of Domri first. Because that's just going to be too much too fast. Not by a long shot. And then we'll play Crater Maker. And we'll pass. Next turn, we can go ahead. If we draw into another lane, we'll be able to use Rune Blaster and or Crater Maker. Colorless non-land permanence. That's oh nope, that's not the right card. We want this fella. Let's go ahead and set them back just a tad. Okay. And that'll shut off their colored. They still have the arcane signet though. I wish we had another lance so we could use the crater maker to get rid of the signet as well. And unfortunately, they're still at, their life total is still too high for us to really try and swing in. Right now, our goal is to buy time for us to get something stronger going. Now, they still got their planes. Ah, there we go. There's a mountain. We needed that. So, what we can do now... Yes. We'll volley veteran. Get rid of the raptor. Let's see. Deals damage equal to the number of goblins we control. Let's see what they do with this. Excellent. Oh, and they will scoop. Yep, because the Warchief gives everything haste, that would be 6, 10, puts them down to 13. The Crater Maker eats their Signet, putting them further down. We have the Denizen and then Squee right after that, so yep. All right. Oh, and we leveled up. Uh, but it doesn't seem like we got any pack rewards. Our vault progress is 86%. So we'll need to draft a lot more in the future to get some more of those wild cards. Speaking of Fairy, next week, since Fairy received the second highest votes, she will be hosting the next Monday Magic. So... We'll be going through our decks to figure out exactly what it is that she would like to show off. As mentioned before, if we can get specific cards, you may end up seeing blue-red storm. You could also see blue-green ramp in some capacity. I know for sure the primary deck that she has right now is mono blue Kiora. And let's see. Could also end up being a good one for Elena. The Esper Fairy Commander. I know she enjoys that one quite a bit too. Next up, we'll be up against Rigo Streetwise Mentor. So let's go ahead and refresh ourselves on what he does. Rigo enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it. And whenever they attack a player or planeswalker with one or more creatures, power one or less, draw a card. Ah, so like what we have, this is also a low to the ground aggro deck. Fortunately. Let's see, we do have some removal, not like, we don't have bolts or anything like that, but we do have a decent amount of removal. Let's see, when the trap finder dies, we get to seek a creature with mana value 3 or less, it costs 1 less, and then at the end of the turn, we sacrifice it. And then, let's see, we'll have Fisher Wizard next turn. We've got Thrill of Possibilities if we need to dig. Removal, removal. This should be fine. 
And I do think this setup works better with the tuber on the left side. Because it seems like all of the relevant information on magic tends to be on the right hand side, which makes sense. If this was developed for mobile, then it makes sense that you would put all of your tools on the right hand side so people can thumb on over with their phones. Now, notwithstanding left handed people, of course, but that does make sense. Let's see, they have a fairy. Hmm. When Wizard enters the battlefield, we can discard a card, and if we do draw a card. Everything is very small. I don't know that we actually need the Rending Flame. So what I'll do is I'm going to swing in with the Trap Finder. Because I doubt that they actually block with the Seer. Not if they want to use it with Rigo. And that will be their mistake. In a matchup like this, I would think that you would want to trade as aggressively as possible. Now, hmm. I'm going to go ahead and play the gate specifically so we can play Squee on time. The Fisher Wizard is less important than making sure we can play Squee as aggressively as possible. Yep, and they'll go ahead and start swinging back in too. Now here's where things start getting fun. They have two mana open, chat. They have two mana open. I wonder if they're expecting us to play Squee. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great for them if we were to just... Play our commander into a counterspell. No, nope, we'll just go ahead and pass our turn there. And we're able to do that specifically because we have both a Braid, Brand New Flame, and Throw of Possibility available. Now, Rigo is a problem because he does come into play with a shield counter. Meaning that we're going to have to spend two cards to get rid of him. Whenever I attack, but... We can buy ourselves a little extra time by trying to take out the Seer now. The question is if that's what I want to do, and I feel like that may be the case. Because that's going to prevent them from drawing this turn. Oh, and we found some prisoners. Now, how do we want to run this back? The shield counter will go away if they do anything, so we'll go ahead and we'll drop Squee. And if they want to block with Rigo, that will get rid of the shield counter. Okay. Now, let's see then. We will leave Squee in the graveyard for now. We'll pass. Now, Rigo does not have a shield counter. And he can't draw cards by himself. If we have a chance, we can run new flame. There's also the option of Thrill of Possibility. Into drawing. Ah, a 1-4. Look at the top card of your library anytime you may cast a creature spell from the top of your library. And if you cast a creature spell from your library, it becomes a black bird in addition to its other colors and types as flying and base power. I see. I see. Okay then, so we have two cards in our graveyard. Hmm. One mana open. Do they counter this? For one mana, they would have to have a day's effect. A counter spell that caught that says counter unless they pay one. No, they have a fading hope. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Okay, so they have a tempo play on their side. We'll play out the Forgotten Caves. Swing in. Pass. We have a nice little chess match going on here today, chat. The Slither Blade. That is the benefit of playing a deck like Rigo. Hmm... Now, we have three cards in there. Let's do it like this. Let's go ahead. Threaten Rigo with Play with Fire. They'll counter the Play with Fire. And then we'll be able to play Squee by exiling Play with Fire. And no! They're not taking the bait. Interesting. 
Interesting. So then... Hmm... We can still find some prisoners if we want. What do they have? Let's go ahead and we'll pass the turn. We can cast Squee at any time, but I want to see if they're willing to tap out again to cast to recast Rigo. We'll use our thrill possibilities to discard the Fisher Wizard. And then we'll also... Ah, I see. So they're going to bounce our token. Now, they'll get the draw a card. I don't know that there's anything we can do about that. Well, no, we can still thrill possibility response. Aha! Hmm. So here comes the effigy again. Let's see then. The effigy is now out. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Even better. Let's go ahead and destroy their artifact. There we go. And then we'll thrill. Refill our hand. And we've got Siege Gang Commander and Trailblazer. Okay. They've only got one out. If we drop a Siege Gang Commander, we do get additional goblins, which is very, very good. And sets us up much more strongly than I think anything else. So let's go ahead and we'll drop him. Because now the Siege Gang Commander threatens to take out Rigo. The Siege Gang Commander lets us sacrifice a goblin and pay two mana to deal two damage to any target. That means taking out their Slither Blade, taking out Rigo, and they'll get the draw card if they play Rigo. No, they're going to Faithful Absence our Goblin. Okay. But we still have three little tokens here. And then we also have a Hazaret Monument. Right now, Squee costs four. We play the ha Monument. Squee's going to cost three. Hmm. And the Slither Blade kind of just keeps everything on lockdown. So then what if, for example, we were to Hazaret Monument... Play the Prospector, discard the Trailblazer. Will they let us? No, they're going to counterspell the monuments. They don't want us to be able to dig. And we correctly read that they did have counter magic available. So then, we are going to go ahead, drop the Prospector. Hmm, there's no real reason for us to play the Trailblazer. And I don't think it's worth it just to crack the clue. Okay, so they kill our ability to rummage. Now they play Rigo. So the blade gets in, they draw a card. So now they're even on a card advantage. And now it's our turn. What can we do here? Note that we do have the gate, but that's essentially going to be 5 mana to draw a card. Hmm. Let's see. What if... Yeah, let's go go ahead and cast Squee. And we'll eat our artifact. Eat some instants. And now Squee is back. Next thing's next. And they're likely to trade Rigo with Squee again. That should be fine. Because we just did a lot of damage. Move our commander to the command zone. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to decline. Because now... Wait, no. I, oh. I meant to have Squee move to the command zone. Because if we move Squee to the command zone, then our graveyard is still full enough to recast Squee if they counter him again. So I guess at this point, we'll play the Trailblazer. And we'll cast Squee again next turn. 
Alright, so they have Artifice's Assistant. Whenever you cast a Historic Spell, Scry 1. That is... Ah. And now they found a way to stabilize. Yes, plus... Sky Cat Sovereign. Elemental Cat. With flying. Sky Cat Sovereign gets plus one, plus one for each other creature control with flying. And then for four mana, they can make a token. Unfortunately, I think our opponent... Has completely... Stabilized here. Now, let's see. They have a Goblin Picker. Hmm. This will be a tricky one. Hmm. Let's go ahead and crack the clue. That does draw us a new land. Tech play with one or more. They still they draw a creature, so that's the upside there. Hmm. How do we want to do this? We can sacrifice it to Kirk prospect if we really want to. The issue here is primarily... You know what? We'll have to go all in anyway. So, at this point, we have to push. Let's go ahead and show them what goblins are made of. I'll swing with everything except the prospector specifically. Because the prospector... Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So they do this. All three of these goblins are going to die regardless. What we can do then is we can get three... Mm, four. I feel like that would be the play. So then let's go ahead and activate Prospector. We'll sacrifice Goblin. Uh, yes, we will move you to the command zone. Or we'll activate you again. Sacrifice Goblin. Uh, nope. Activate again. Sacrifice Goblin. And then I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice you too. Because now we can go ahead, activate our gate, and turn what that into an opportunity to at least draw some more. Now they're at 6 health. And we have a shredded sails to try and deal with the Skycat Sovereign before things get way too out of hand. They have four blockers out. They have five blockers out. And they can make a six. Trailblazer is going to require at least two on its own. So right now we have five hats. Hmm, we don't have enough here. Hold up the shredded sails, specifically to deal with the Sky Cat Sovereign when they go to use it. I think that's what we have to do here. Alright, let's push it. And if they have counter magic, then they have it. We are in a very... Ah, they did have it. Oh. But... Do they have something for this? Because now they can't make flying cats in response. They have to have either more protection... No? Do they have it? They did! Oh no, they had Summer Veil. Ah, let's see. Commands on a library. We'll put it... The... On top. We'll go ahead and let Squee go there. And then one, two, three, four. Yep. Let's go all in. Let's see. Hexproof from blue or black until end of turn. Okay, and they'll do what they can to eat all those goblins. They're not going to block the Trailblazer because that will kill. And the Trap Finder will let us draw without shuffling Squee away. Now they're at three life. They're within bolt range. All we have to do is draw a bolt. 
which we're not going to be able to do because we have Squee. We're getting there. They can't swing out as hard as they want. Okay, so they'll get the Scry one. I misread this. I thought I was going to draw them cards, but it's not that good. Oh, and there's a Sagavian Angel. I know Hero Girl enjoys that quite a bit. It's very small. So, yes, we'll go ahead and put Squee into our hand. Thank you very much. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead. We'll cast Squee. We have two cards in our graveyard. Let's go ahead, swing with the trap finder. Because what are they going to do? Not block it? Go down to two? So there's a battle cry goblin, which we can run next turn. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Not quite. They don't have lethal quite yet. Hushbringer, okay. They need to try and get us down. Alright, at this point, it just comes down to luck. We've played this about as well as we can. So then... The Hushbringer having lifelink is going to be the death of us. Let's see that. Nothing for it. Alright, do we get it? Light up the stage. Interesting. Hmm. Well, we're not going to be able to deal damage, so let's go ahead and see if we can get that bolt. Ah, unless we pay two. Creature or player. Unfortunate. Let's see, we can get rid of the Hushbringer and we'll still have a chance. One, two, three, four, five, ten. This is only going to be four damage. Get rid of the Hushbringer and unfortunately, pass the turn. They may still have this. One, two. Alright, and they get the draw card. The tempo on this is definitely what's kept them around. We could not keep Rigo off. So they get to continuously have gas. Oh, and there's the flame but less bolt. Let's see then. Hmm. And we're at 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 12. That's lethal. That is lethal. Unless... Let's see. The Battlecry Goblin here. The Battlecry Goblin here. The Battlecry Goblin does not do what we want it to do. So what we do then... Let's go ahead and discard our Goblin. Two damage to target creature. Alright, we'll drop a Crater Maker. No attacks past turn. This keeps us from being lethal. I'm going to use this to help us fight any sort of protection they may have. Because if they swing out with everything... Hmm... Let's see. That both of these have vigilance is a problem. So then let's go ahead and get rid of both of those. So that way they have to start committing blockers. They'll still get the draw card. What I was hoping for was I was hoping that they would overcommit. Discard our swamp, and let's keep digging. Ah, key to the city. Play that. And now, 
next turn, we can get this. Oh, this is a very tight race. They're gonna swing with one bird. Hmm. All right, so. Let's see. Target. Squee. Go ahead and attack there. Ah, they had. Let's see, do we have. Yes, we have plenty. We have plenty. All right, then. Mm -hmm. Do I cast Squee now? I feel like at this point I do. Because then they can try and remove them, and then we'll just recast them. So we'll eat land, land, land. And then here he is again. And we'll even be able to use Key of the City to start drawing additional cards. Okay, so they're going to counter him. And then we'll do it again. One, two, three, four. You can't get rid of Squee that easily. So they had two answers that they were holding back for Squee. Oh, they are really trying. That's eight damage. Eight, nine, ten that we cannot deal with. Eleven. If we have any way to pump up Squee, we win. I am fairly sure. Oh, and that's the Cathartic Pyre. Let's see, Foundry Steed Dungeon doesn't help us. Hmm. So then... Let's go ahead and get rid of Denizen. See if we can draw a bolt. Ah, not quite. And unfortunately... Mm-hmm. Go to combat. Swing with Squee. What did... They're gonna unsummon Squee back to our hand. That's cute. That is very, very cute. Um... Let's see. We have play of Madison. So, let's go ahead and get him back into our hand. We're not going to attack, although... No, the Terramander... Yeah, actually, you know what? No, because the Trailblazer is what's blocking Rigo. Oh, but we play Re Squee and Squee blocks Rigo. Let's go ahead and swing with the Trailblazer. Because now, no matter what they bl they block it with... Excellent. That's going to get rid of the Eye Kite. Which we could not have blocked anyway. We'll play Squee. Squee survives. Pass the turn. They'll draw a card with their Spectral Sailor, which... This is such a good mana sink for them, especially in this really close grind-out match like this. And what I'm going to do now... Let's see, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. I have to do this now before they potentially draw into anything else. They're going to activate the Spectral Sailor in response, but that also cuts down on the things that they can respond with. And they're going to leave their man open so they can actually do more. Oh, we're getting down to the wire here, chat. Oh, at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equals the number of tapped creatures you control. All right. I don't know that I've ever played a game that's this grindy and close. Ah, sneaky guide. Oh, but it needs haste. Four damage to target creature or planeswalker. Hmm. 
Let's see. Certainly. Oh, but the Terramander. The Terramander is what's threatening us right now. Right this second. This Terramander is what's going to cause us problems. So then let's go ahead and activate our picker. Hmm. I'm going to get rid of this guide. Guide is surprisingly decent. Alright. We go ahead. Make squee. And... Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I still think... I think we've lost this one. I think we lost this one. The key came just a little too late. Because now, what they do... Is they swing in five... Six, seven, yep. Unfortunately, we couldn't get there. It was a very good back and forth, but we just couldn't get there. Honestly, I'm impressed that goblins did as well as they did. Usually against a Rigo deck, the tempo and the ability to draw cards is too much. Which, granted, it was that was the case there. But the fact that we kept up so long is a good testament to how well our green little guys did. Little gobnaries. Gob... Gob binaries? Gob binaries. Alright then, so let's go ahead. We are reaching our final hour of the stream. So at this point, what I will be doing is I will head over and I will make a new pro I will make a new poll. Let's see that. Where did Hero Girls put that? Ah, there we go. Let's go ahead and make a new one. New poll. Which deck do we do we finish with? Your choices are Red, Black, Rivas or Squee. You will have three minutes starting now. So, the Squee, which we were just showcasing, right here, and then Rivas. We have right here. In the case of a tie, we will do streamer's choice. So, we've got Dragon Ramp right here. And the ability to cast back any creatures in our graveyard. And we also have Squee. Squee and just a bunch of little red goblins. Squee who did surprisingly well, all things considered. I'm very glad that we held on, because any sort of bolt or, or even just sh a top deck shock would have gotten that for us. Now, let's see then. I believe we are playing with fire. Yes, we are playing with fire. So that, let's see. No? Yes? Okay, yes. We hadn't drawn our play with fire yet. This deck is just full of little guys. Brothers End also would have been very good. If we could have dropped a Brothers End and wiped their board, we could have replayed Squee and then taken over there too. That would have been very good. And I'm very thankful for everyone who's come out to today's stream to watch my first hosting while we had that poll going on. I do want to remind everyone that we do do magic every Monday at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wednesday, we will be having our collab for Master Duel. And I'll also be previewing our next week's plans. So we'll be swapping out Master Duel for another Yu-Gi-Oh! base game. Friday, we'll be ending Ender Lilies, our Metroidvania Souls-like playthrough about a young girl who is able to purify ancient spirits and who use those ancient spirits to fight on her behalf. It's a game that we very much enjoyed playing, and we're very looking forward to being able to finish it and sharing that experience with everyone. Also, very quickly, go ahead. Seems to be good. 
We are running out of time, though, with no votes. So if that ends up being the case, we'll end up going with Revaz. And with the time up, it does look like Chad is undecided, so we will be playing Revaz for the remainder of the stream. All right, let's go ahead and end the poll. Hide it away. And we'll finish this deck up with some of my favorite dragons. All right, here we go. Drink some caffeine for awareness and some water to stay hydrated. We'll be up against Venser, Corpse Puppet. I was not aware that this card only costs two, but it's a 1 3 with lifelink and toxic. And then whenever it proliferates, they get to make a golem and then augment a golem. This is a good hand as is. We'll keep this. We'll drop our sulfur springs first. Put that into a cold steel heart. Ah, and they will ramp with mindstone as well. There's our Cold Steel Heart. What do we want to put that on? We have double black sources, double red sources. We'll go ahead and put that on black. Now, as for our plays, they're going to cast Fencer. They very likely have protection for him, too. He's a Phyrexian Zombie Wizard, so Opportunistic Dragon does not get rid of him. Hmm... Why don't we go ahead... We'll play our gate to keep tempo. And then we'll pass the turn. Specifically so we can hold of the Bedevil and try and kill them at the end of their turn. Now, what did they do main phase two? Ah, I see. Of course, the Toxic. Once they have the Toxic, they can just start proliferating. Of course. Of course, I should have known. Alright, so then... How do we want to slow them down? We'll be on 5 mana this turn. Let's play our Dragon. They'll counter this likely. They do. But that's okay since Rivaz can get it back. Well, maybe it's not okay. Ah, and they have Ashiok. There is so then. Mm. Ashiok is here. Return non land permit to its owner's hand. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of Ashiok right away with a card that they can't counter. And this is why we love Inferno the Star of Mounts. It makes playing against Control so much easier. They'll play Vincer. Exile. They got a Wrathful Dragon and a Painful Bond. They have one mana out. Hmm. So then... I want to keep out... I want to keep the Venser away. But, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be enough for Rivaz, Swiftfoot Boots, and Opportunistic Dragon, perhaps. No. Because the Rivaz gives us two back. So we have seven, three, six, go down to one. That would be three mana left over. That's not enough. So let's go ahead, we'll drop Ugin. Oh, um, okay, they do. I know more than um, you in a thousand let's see. Let's go ahead and get rid of Venser, I think. Ah, so they're going to proliferate. Which means that they get their Golem. Line and life like it's in a turn. We can still play our boots, spend the mana to equip Inferno, and then I'm... Hmm. 
I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to attack specifically so that if they try and take out Ugin, they still lose either token. Well, their mind spike doesn't get rid of Junji, fortunately for us. Let's see. Whenever Thermy Bird deals combat damage to a player, proliferate. Yep, and they will make that trade. They take out our Elder Dragon War. We're going to get rid of this thing. Because I feel like it's more obnoxious to deal with than the Golem. So they'll pull it right again. And they are thoroughly on the Toxic plan then. Alright then. So they have two mana available. Let's see. Excellent. Very good there. And now we can still go ahead and cast our Opportunistic Dragon, take their Mind Stone. That's what we want. Oh, and we can take their Golem too. Let's see, if you don't control a creature named Hollow Sentinel... Let's go ahead and take their Sentinel. And then... Hmm... I'm still going to leave the Inferno back. Because if they try and deal with the Opportunistic Dragon, we're still going to need a way to block their Thrumming Bird. You could argue that I should have taken the Mind Stone, since that does set them back on mana. Let's see. Tap Enchanted Creature, then proliferate. I thought so. Okay. So we are now six away from death. They have two cards left in hand. Let's see... They'll draw two, lose two. Alright, now it's our turn. And I'm gonna lead off with a Thought Seize. Our life total doesn't matter at this point. Cast, draw X cards, Beholder, land. Excellent. So then we are safe. Yes, I like that. Go ahead. Drop Junji Ito. And then we will also... Cast our Swashbuckler. Go to combat. Let's see. Swing with the opportunistic dragon. I think it's worth it. Either they take eight. Or they sacrifice the throwing bird. There we go. That puts us in a much stronger position. And they sacrifice their mind stone to draw anyway. Now, they could still Wrath, and that would set us back by quite a bit. Let's see. Can't attack or block, so we just have possession of it. Oh, the, the Opportunistic Dragon has its toy. I like to think that it has the dragon like a little... Like a little doll. And our opponent scooped. <sighs> Certainly makes me feel better about having the Sentinel. By grabbing the Sentinel over the Mind Stone. Although that was a very scary turn. What I may have considered doing is actually casting the Devil in response to the attack. So that way they can't get our Toxic. They can't get us poisoned. Because that would have been the same result. But if they don't have the counter spell, then that saves us poison and keeps them off of their proliferating. And puts more pressure on them to get Venser going. Because otherwise, the only option that they would have for proliferation would be just whatever incidental counters they have. And here it is. Here's the big one. Atraxa. This card has been so frustrating to play against. I'm going to keep this. 
only because we have to throw a possibility. We need to draw some sort of artifact removal immediately. Let's see, we have boots. Let's see, we'll drop our swamp past the turn there. And they already have all the colors. There's the chromatic lantern. We need to drop Junji. Well, there's a Storm's Wrath, but that's not what we want. Oh, boy. Hmm. We'll go ahead. We'll drop our boots and pass the turn there. This is very precocious. Because even though a Traxxer costs 7, if they play her, they just stabilize and win. Oh, and they have Rusko. I see. That's... Hmm. So then... They have one, two, three, four, five, six. Atraxa comes down next turn. I don't think there is a way. Yeah, there's just no way. We'll have to fight through whatever she finds. So we'll go ahead. And we're not going to be swinging mana, so might as well attack in. Here's where things get rough, chat. Now they drop a Traxa, and they refill their hand. No! Interesting. They're going to take the turn off. Take the turn off to deal with the boots so that they don't have to deal with Rivaz. Interesting. You, why wouldn't you... Let's see, she cost seven. They had five, six, seven. They had enough. Why would you not just slam Atraxa down at that and refill your hand? If we manage to draw into the brother's end, we can still set them back. Alright. So they bounce Rivest to her hand. That's fine, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, we do not get what we need. So Atraxas still comes down. Hmm. We can drop Rivas, hold up an Infernal Grasp at least. So we'll go ahead and pass turn there. Are they concerned that they won't be able to play everything in time for the Midnight Clock? Up oh, and there's Kaya. Kaya is a very scary one. Target right, creature enchantment. If it wasn't Aura. Hmm. Great token. This copy of it, except it's a woman spirit flying in addition to its other types. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll send Rivaz to her hand. Still don't understand that. All right. They must be really afraid of our dragons, although I couldn't tell you why. So what we do now, then? We go ahead. We storm its wrath. There must be something we can still do. Mm. Yep. And then they play a tracks and refill their hand. Yep. And now she comes down. And then, if we kill her, they just refill their whole hand again. Still... That's better than just letting them have her. Alright, so now they get to add... I'm not gonna bother looking through what they're currently deciding on, because we'll get to see everything up in their hand anyway. They get a land, Panharmonicon... Explore guild. Okay, so they actually... They kind of whipped there. Okay, so we're not done yet. We're not done yet. The Guild of Goose gets them a mana. And they have... Three, four, five, six, seven. 
8, 9, 10. One more land, they can Harmonicon and Atraxa. So I think with that being the case... Let's go ahead, we'll bolt the bird. And then... Yeah, we'll still cast Revas. What creatures... We, I guess we can take a Rusko. Okay, so they will explore. They'll play Wall of Blossoms. Interesting. Why wouldn't you play the Panharmonicon first? That feels like a missed sequence. Now, they will get to completely refill their hand. On the next turn, for sure. So the real question becomes... Hmm... Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, but we don't actually want to ca cast Junji with this, do we? Because when he dies, we get the trigger. Hmm. But it's also not like there's a whole lot we can do otherwise, right? Right. And it's also not like we were able to draw into any sort of artifact. We could painful bond to try and get it get there. At this point, the only thing we can do is try and weather a Traxa. <sighs> yep, and then they'll go ahead, refill the deck, and although there's something to be said about if they spend their whole turn trying to play a Traxa. Ah, and they'll play Elish Norn. Okay. Permanent enemy buff. Okay, so look at double mana from the Lotus Cobra now. This may be the end of it. We didn't see the artifacts that we needed. We needed a way to deal with the Chromatic Lantern. Ah, wait. Oh, they played the goose. I see. So we can still get rid of Elish Norn. But at what cost? Hmm. We play Elish no we get rid of Elish Norn. I think that's probably still better than nothing else, right? Probably. So we'll go ahead, we'll chance our Dragon Horde. We'll go ahead, play Swashbuckler. Wait, hold on. Can Ribbonus actually cast Young Red Dragon? I don't think it. I don't think he can. Oh right, I goofed. I goofed. Let's see. Does this? No, it does not. Forgot about Elish Norn being there, so that means I can't cast Murderous Rider this turn. So, in the interest of time, I am going to concede, although normally I would prefer to play this out. But because we made that specific misplay with forgetting that Elish Norn, the intent was to play Swashbuckler, get the treasure out so that way we can maintain tempo. But I forgot Elish Norn shut off Swashbuckler, so that's a punt on our part. Atraxa is also just a very strong and very resilient deck. A little bit like Darius, honestly. I'm honestly surprised that Atraxa... She didn't exactly whiff. She managed to grab a Panharmonicon, which is incredibly powerful. Alright, so we have a good hand here. We can even lead off with a Fearsome Whelp. Evelyn, I haven't seen this card that that often. Whenever she or another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of each player's library with collection counters. And then on each turn, you can play a card with, from exile with a collection counter on it. You may spend mana as though it were a man of any color to cast it. So, we'll keep this. We'll lead it off with Gate. Go into either Blood or Cryptic. We're definitely playing the Wealth, though. 
so... Yep, there's the fearsome whelp. Let the baby get in. Now the fearsome whelp draws a lot of removal. If they have it, they'll use it on him. They'll use it on him. I would prefer that they didn't, but that would be the correct play. And there's the abrade, yeah. Now fortunately that has the upside. Of Lady S. Cast or Rivaz. So they have to have additional removal. Which they may just have. And if they have it, well then, they're still not developing the board. Alright, everyone sacrifices a creature, fair enough. And then, we'll pay the two life and drop a Thunderbreak Regent. Just keep dropping threats. If you have more threats than they have answers, you will win. So they're going to go ahead and play this land tapped. They do have counter magic up. No, they have cold steel hearts. So if we draw into a land, we can replay Rit fast, but I'd rather play the Wrathful Red. They only have one black. All right, there we go. Double Dragon. Which was an okay cartoon from the late 80s, early 90s. I don't know that anyone actually remembers Double Dragon. That's, Double Dragon had two brothers and was based off of a be side-scrolling beat-em-up type game. Now this is black, this is black. We have six mana available. I'd rather just hold the Cold Steel Heart for the Unexpected Woodenfall at this point. And what I could actually do... Revast costs 5. There's the Fearsome Whelp. Hmm. Contemplation. We can cast the Revast, but the Revast doesn't do as much for us. And if they're going to Wrath us, I don't want to have to reset Revast again. So they'll go ahead and conjure a spell into their hand. And they'll just scoop for us. Thank you, opponent. So, like we, they had a braid for the whelp, rampage for Rivaz, but they were having to tap out in order to do that, which means shields down, play dragons. Hmm. And we are getting close to lunchtime over on the west coast too. Hmm. This was a very relaxing chat today. Very relaxing day for games. We had a wonderful raid from Arya Zur, who is currently sleeping, and I hope she's dreaming well. And I'm so glad that I got to share my love of magic once again. We'll be up against Soul of Windgrace, which is a Jund lands deck. Now, let's see. Oh! Our opponent evidently decided that their hand wasn't good enough to continue, or they had other obligations. Which is a shame, because this was a banner of a hand. And lead off with Station, and a Mountain to play Reckless Barbarian. And then we have Haunted Ridge. So that would have given us 5 mana to drop, potentially, Tyrant? No, we would go Carnelian Orb, Sacrifice the Barbarian, so that way we can drop Rivez. And then that goes into Tyrant. Mm -hmm. I know some people consider it bad manners to go over lines of play after a game has already gone over. But considering that this is a stream and that the purpose is education and sharing of knowledge, I do like continuing to go over lines of play if the game had continued at that point. Or if the opponent had drawn into something that could have kept them alive. Now that being said, it is important to recognize that you maybe don't want to do that when you're actually playing with people, unless you're explicitly playtesting to try to get an idea of your standard metagame, your locals, or you're just trying to jam games and learn, to learn about other decks. 
since, depending on their temperament, they may not take that well. We'll be up against Planeswalker Narset. With the Jeskai colors. Another one that tends to be somewhat stormy. I don't care for this hand. It's too slow. Mm, I do also need to consider putting in more ramp again. Because I believe we cut the stone idol. And real quick, don't forget to stretch. Don't forget to stretch, chat. Let's see. This hand is better in that it has a painful bond to draw additional cards. We also got a blood crypt on turn one. So we can painful bond. Sign of blood turns into a draw to lose three. I got a foretell. That's usually the scry to draw to. We'll end there. And depending on what they do. Alright. So I like presenting them with the ability to counter and tap out. Because that does mean that we could potentially play Rivas for free. Narset would be a problem though, since Narset could potentially shoot Rivas. But you never know. Ah. Okay then, so we do manage to get away. Now, the real question is... They had a chance to respond. Hmm. So I want to continue building. So we'll see how afraid they are of the orb. Ah, and they're going to let it resolve. I'm happy to see that. It means that they think that they can go ahead and counter whatever it is that they're going to play. We've got Asushi, Moonvale Regent, Junji. If Junji dies, I think it just rips apart their hand. You don't really get a chance to reanimate since it does specify not- Ah, I see. It's because they had Revoke Existence. That would be why. Okay, fair enough. So then, right now we're at seven cards in hand. Hmm. This is still incredibly suspect. How do we want to do this? Well, we gotta give him something, right? I think the Moonvale Ridge is the one I'm fine with them countering the most. I don't want a sushi to get countered. But we can at least get the Moon Veil back with Rivas. And next turn, we'll be able to cast Sign and Blood and Rivas. Depending on what we draw, of course. Because if we don't... Ah, okay, so they will... Ah, it was saw it coming. That was what they foretold. If they decide to play Narset, we also have the opportunity to play Glorybringer now. Although... Hmm. No, they're not going to do it. Alright, then let's go ahead and we'll sign and blood ourselves. See if we can draw into a swamp. Oh, are they actually considering counting the sign and blood? Ah, looks like no. Alright then. Hmm. If we play the mountain and the arcane signet, we still hold up an infernal grasp. For t color fixing... Let's go ahead and drop the tramway station and then play the Signet. They just need to tap out. And now we can play Ugin. But it looks like they're holding back on Narset until they have the ability to protect her. They probably have the ability to protect her. Victory is just another puzzle to be now a two Consider mana. Future, then strike. Oh. Draw, then you may discard. Interesting. Interesting. So we have five, six, seven mana. Hmm. Seven mana. And they went with Narset. They have two mana open. They could still have removal if we decide to go with a glory bringer. And we also have the Brotherhood end here. Let's see. If we Brotherhood, we can kill the Narset. And we can still play out Sushi. 
You can also play Ribats. Let's go ahead and Brother's End, I think. We'll see if they counter it. Because if Narset tries to deal with that sushi, no. I will meditate on defeat. Now, hmm. It's entirely possible. Ah, they had a disdainful stroke, I see. I see. So disdainful stroke definitely would have stopped Ugin and Glorybringer. I still don't like that they had to lose at Sushi Forward, but... Oh! Hello, Sargon. Hmm... Let's go ahead and... One, two, three, four... Interesting. Very interesting. Four... Let's go ahead, add red they and black. Coming. And then... We'll go ahead and run out of glory, Breener. We still have Sarkin on board. There we go. And they resolve. Now, do they have removal for glory, Breener? That's the question. No. What are they holding back? In a... Hmm. Well. Ah, they had Storm's Wrath, I see. So we do lose our Sarkon. Do they have a way to deal with Ugin? Are we just trading one for once at this point? Okay. So whatever they had. Lies beyond vision. Not enough to deal with Ugin. Curiouser and curiouser. But we do have card advantage now. Okay, so they're going to copy whatever it is they play next. If they have removal or burn, that could deal with Ugin. Oh, no! They're going to time warp! Oh no, that's a problem. If they have a way to regrow the time warp. What's that last card in your hand? Memory Deluge. If they can grab another time walk effect, then they'll be able to Galvec iteration again. Alright, let's see what they could do. I do very much like Storm's Wrath in this meta for the same reason that I like those three cost burn spells. Oh no, they had Elspeth. Dang. And then... They don't really have any creatures or planeswalkers. But they do have a gold span dragon. So they'll make a treasure. And then... Until your next turn... That is just incredibly unfortunate. Hmm. And even if we crux of fate to get rid of the gold span dragon, the conqueror's death gets it back. All right then. We'll go ahead. We'll play Junji. Oh no, they don't have another counter spell, do they? Okay, we can still auto pay and keep them around. So there is that, at least. <sighs> so Elspeth's conquest goes away. Elspeth conquers goes away. The memory deluge, and they'll still add two more cards. They currently have five mana, seven mana to work with. If Junji dies, he can rip out cards from their hand, but he has to die for that. And they're playing Jeskai, they're probably playing things along the lines of Swords to Plowshares. 
notably, we will drop the Crux of Fates. Specifically, so we can get rid of the Gold Span Dragon without giving them treasure. Ah. Let's see. Yep. So they're going to lose both of their cards. Unless they can play them at instant speed. Which means that they can't use that. Ah. They'll use their Bone Crusher Giant. Hey, there's a pack negation though. Okay then. So, go ahead. Destroy all dragons. They have Galvanic Generation and a giant. We're not going to worry about that giant. We're just going to swing in. And now they can still play Narset to draw cards. Looks like that's what they're going to do. Honor the past. Negative two. Will they discard a card to Bolt Rivaz? Can they even do that? All right, so Narset's out. And we still have all these dragons to play. Moonvale Regent may be the best option here. Because Moonvale Regent will help refill our hand. Ah, they're going to add Revaz back to our hand. Now, notably, we don't have to use the mana from Revaz in order to play creatures from our hands. So, I am going to go ahead replay Revaz. We have four. We have plenty of mana. Yep, we'll play the Moonvale Regent. Uh, I don't want to use the Infernal Grasp here, but... We'll go ahead, we'll knock out Narset. I know when to concede. And then we'll pass. I could use the Infernal Grasp, heal the Spirit. They'll recast Narset, so they are ver digging very deep. They have to discard. And then... Is it necessary for us to use Infernal Grasp, though? I feel like getting rid of a creature doesn't actually do that. Ah, but we do have a new target for the Bone Crusher Giant. So I am okay with doing that. And yes, we'll discard our non-existent hand. In order to draw. Because we'll get to draw at least one card. We take two. They lose their giant. We have seven, eight, nine. We... Two damage to each creature and each opponent. Let's go ahead and... Yes. Yes. No. No. Let's go ahead and cast Glory Bringer instead. And then I am going to go ahead and discard Elder Dragon War. Ah, oh, Thoughtseize. Let's just double check, make sure there isn't anything we need to worry about. Maybe draw, even draw into a bolt. And they have a bolt for us. So that'll put us down to five. Gets us a Terror of the Peaks. We are now at two. Yep, and at that point... Just continue to draw cards because we can. Oh, and we are at two life. Let's see. Deals damage to target creature or player. I need Such violence time. is upsetting. They're at two life chat. Consider the future, then strike. So either they have the bolt, or we bolt. And if Moonvale Regent dies, this still deals two as long as it's not a board wipe. And if it is a board wipe, well. Let's just hope we have a better top deck than they do. Alright! We did it! 
we got another win. And I think that will do it. Oh, we leveled up and we got another pack. Yep, good games indeed. Today was very lovely. I'll see this through to the end. And we got a very powerful rare too for our efforts. Kaya Intangible Slayer has Hexproof. Can exile any creature. Draws cards and each opponent can scry. And then also drains. This is a very, very strong card and will be very much appreciated in our collection. Now, starting with this stream specifically, we will be uploading the deck lists and putting them in the, the description for the VODs. And we'll even go back and we'll do the same for Witch's stream last week. Let's go ahead and we'll get one last look at the deck. I'm very happy with how Ribas performed. And I'm grateful that my efforts last Thursday when I decided to go ahead and start turning this up before the stream paid off. So, let's go ahead and check that schedule one last time. Again, we do magic every Monday. 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be doing our last Master Duel stream for a while on Wednesday, 4 p.m. 7 p.m. We'll be collaborating with a friend of ours, Directive Zero. And then we'll be unveiling our new Yu-Gi-Oh! plans following after that. Friday, we'll be wrapping up our Ender Lily stream. This will be the last time that we play this wonderful, wonderful Metroidvania that's introduced us into a brand new genre. All right. And then as we wrap things up, we will go ahead and take a look to see if there's anyone that we can raid. After all, we do want to go ahead and pass on the love. And for everyone who's managed to stick around with us so far, thank you for letting us go in. Unfortunately, it looks like all of our friends are offline. So let's just go ahead and head on over to our chatting screen. Everyone who's shown out today, thank you for doing me the kindness of sticking with us and enjoying our time together. I am looking forward to the time where I can present in a way that's... Not exact. Professional would be my preferred term. But, well, a little more sharply. So, thank you all very much once again. Big shoutouts to Aria Zerf for the raid earlier. Thank you to our brand new followers. And... I do believe that is it. So next week, we'll be having Hero Fairy showing up with either her Kyora deck, some blue-green ramp, some blue-red is it spells. Deck lists will be in the description of the VOD if you're watching this VOD on YouTube. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, and we have our Discord link in the chat history as well. Everyone, please stay safe. Be kind to yourself and others, and we will see you again next time. Same hero time, same hero channel. Good night, everyone. There. I think what we do is we go ahead and we play that out. And we continue just building our board. And... Yeah, we're gonna go ahead, play this out too. X creatures and... Oh my god! Oh dear mother of pearl! What the hell? Seek X creatures and enchantments were X... Oh my... Oh! What the... I don't have an emote appropriate for this moment. What the actual googly moogly? Holy... You know what? You know what? I don't have a way to come back from that. GG's. Wow. Wow.